The next part of our installation process is the flushing and purging of our heat exchanger and also this, the uh, system side of our water piping. This is the new GeoFlow flush cart. It is available now through the Bosch accessory catalog. It incorporates a one and a half horsepower pump, a built-in on-off switch with a ground fault interrupter on it, a 20-foot cord. It is 120 volt. Uh, it also has a reservoir tank on it and a series of valves that allows us to fill this reservoir, pump water through our loop system, and flush and purge the, the fl flush all the debris out and purge all the air out of the system. For this system, we'll be using a water-only solution because this installation is in a southern climate and the minimum entering loop temperatures never drop below 42 degrees Fahrenheit. In areas where the minimum loop temperatures drop below 42 degrees Fahrenheit or when the piping will be routed through areas subject to freezing, an antifreeze solution is required. When using an antifreeze solution, we'd have to calculate the freeze protection percentage based on the total volume of fluid. For more details on this process, please reference the installation manual. The first step is to remove the flow center flush port caps and then remove the double O-ring flush port plugs. Next, install the one and a half inch double O-ring flush cart connectors. Be sure to lubricate O-rings prior to install. Next, attach the return hose connection of the flush cart to the water inside of the flow center and then make your discharge hose connection to the water outside of the flow center. In order to properly purge the ground loop, we now have to adjust the position of the factory set three-way valves on both the Geo Prime tank and the flow link pump center. Starting with the Geo Prime tank and using a 3 8 inch drive, isolate the prime tank by rotating the three-way valves from the operation position to the bypass position. Adding any sort of water pressure to the Geo Prime tank during commissioning process will void the Geo Prime warranty. Next, rotate the flow center three-way valves so that the off marking is set to the six o'clock position, thereby isolating the flow center and the heat pump from the ground loop. Now we need to verify our flush cart is set up properly. Verify the screen filter inside the reservoir is strapped to the PVC return pipe. At this time, all ball valves on fl the flush cart should be set in the off position. Connect the 20-foot flush cart power cord to a grounded 120-volt 15-amp circuit. Attach garden hose to the GHT swivel adapter on the flush cart. Open up the garden hose ball valve in order to add fluid to the flush cart reservoir. Open up the quarter-inch pump case drain port valves in order to bleed the air and prime the pump. Flip on the GFI power switch. As the water drops, add more by opening the half-inch garden hose fill valve. Note, watch the fluid making sure the water level never drops below the flush cart suction port or runs over the top of the reservoir. Once the reservoir water level is reasonably stable or begins to increase, turn the makeup water down or off as conditions dictate. Observe the discharged water as it re-enters the reservoir. Watch for air bubbles being discharged into the reservoir. To verify possible air pockets in loop field, a deadhead process is necessary. But before we do this, mark the level of the water by adjusting the black ring on the reservoir sight glass tube. Start the deadhead process by closing the one and a half inch flush cart return valve and monitoring the fluid level. If the fluid drop is greater than one inch, there is still air in the system that is being compressed by the power of the pump. Reverse the flow path or open and close the flush cart discharge valve to shock the flow and continue flushing purging activity. Continue filling and deadheading until the fluid drop is less than one inch. Once the water table inside the reservoir has leveled off and the air is removed from the ground loop, then flush the lines connecting the unit and the flow center. Starting with the discharge side, rotate the three-way valves so that the off mark is at the 12 o'clock position, thereby isolating the ground loop from the flow center and the heat pump. Repeat with the return three-way valve. This process should only take approximately five to 10 minutes. Once the air is removed from the unit and the flow center, we now need to flush and purge the ground loop and the unit simultaneously. Starting with the flow center return three-way valve, rotate the off mark to the full flush position, following immediately with the discharge three-way valve. In this position, the flush cart purges the air from the unit and the ground loop at the same time. 
It's recommended to purge the system in full flush position for a minimum of two hours. Once complete, turn the pump off and rotate the flow center three-way valves to the off position starting with the return side. This will isolate the flush cart from the system. Be careful not to pressurize the loop. At this point, we're finished with the flow center three-way valves and we can reinstall the plugs and protective caps. Remove hoses and flush cart connectors from the flow center. Apply white petroleum jelly to both double o-ring flow center plugs. Insert the plugs and screw on the caps. Next, we're going to fill the GeoPrime 2.5 gallon reservoir. Rotate the GeoPrime tank three-way valves to the operation position. To fill, simply remove the reservoir cap and add water. Using the sight gauge, fill up to the halfway mark and then replace the cap until it clicks. The geo loop is now completely flushed of air and debris and the unit is now ready for startup commissioning. It's recommended at this point to remove and clean the flush cart screen filter.